Hello, look at the state of this. Thankfully, this is looking a lot neater. Now I will say before we continue, uh, rest assured, this is not gonna be nothing but GSO2 from now on. This channel will branch out back to more widespread RC types. It's just that I've been focusing on this because this is my project at the moment and things. So hopefully if you'll forgive me for that. Anyway, what do you think? What do you think? I am. Um, I'm quite pleased with the job I've done. It's pretty neat, there's no runs or anything. The masking's pretty accurate. Uh, that was liquid mask I used on the arches and also the pickup bed. Um, I will say though, when I first peeled the film off, I didn't like it at all. I was so disappointed. Um, and I'll explain. I was aiming for a dark red metallic color, like a blood red metallic. Um, and this isn't it. Uh, I, I didn't make a mistake, uh, What I just didn't know what the combination of uh, PS15 Tamiya uh, metallic red backed with PS12 silver backed with PS5 black, I didn't know how dark that would come out, I was just basically trying it and I thought it would be darker, the the uh, cap the on the on the paint can for PS15 is darker although it's not really a great um, an example really, I mean most of the caps are quite inaccurate but Anyway, and then the PS12 silver is silver, not bright silver, and then obviously backing it with black. But anyway, the point is it's not as dark as I wanted. Um, so that's disappointing. And in some lights it even looks a little bit pinkish, got a little bit of a pinkish hue. Um, so that's really disappointing. Um, don't get me wrong though, it looks a lot better in person than it does on the camera. I'm seeing it right now and it looks quite flat on the camera and lifeless. Whereas in, in, in person there is a real quality metallic sheen to it. The finish is beautiful, I'll be, say, I'll, I'll be honest, it's just that the colour isn't dark enough for my taste. I don't really like red that much apart from dark reds. Um, but anyway, uh, so I was so disappointed that I um, sat the night, was it that night, I think it was that night, two nights ago, three nights ago, something like that. Um, it was just before midnight, just before bedtime and I sat with um, a new body shell and paint in the online basket humming and hawing or whether I should click checkout at a cost of over £100. I stopped myself at the last moment and said, no, we'll just sleep on it and look at it tomorrow with a fresh set of eyes, knowing, there goes my phone, sorry about that, knowing that um, it's not what you first looked at. It's not what you first set out to do. It's not a ta uh, Tamiya, a GMED GSO1 Komodo colours, but on a GSO2. Um, but So I looked at it with fresh eyes and actually... It's not bad at all, it's growing on me. And the good news is, because it's lighter than it initially intended, these silver and black graphics actually stand out against it a whole lot more than they would have done if, the, if it was as dark as I was aiming for. Uh, and in fact, um, the more as I was bolting the bits on, like the, you know, you've got the, the panel here with the wiper blades, you've got the grill, you've got the bumper, you've got the roll cage. The more I bolted these things on, the better it looked, the more I all these black parts on so yeah I've got to the point now where I actually like it so that's good I am I'm happier with it now than than I initially was um, it's not quite there yet in terms of functionality and let me take the body shell off and I'll show you in case you don't know this has a stealth system for the body pins so you see there's no posts coming up through the through the body at all there's two clips there so there's one to the back you pull them downwards there we go and the front ones, put you pull them back. Those are not so easy to get in at all then. Oof. Hopefully this will become easier as, as you use it. There we go. Lift the, fr lift the front, there we go. And then you slide the, the back off like that. There we are. Now look at this mess. <laughs> um, ah, uh, yeah, there we go, right. I haven't wired up everything yet. Um, some changes happened. First of all, that nice little uh, Yeah Racing Hack Moto version 2 motor I had in it. It's a lovely little motor, uh, but it's timed. It's got timing advancement in one direction. 
uh, which turned out to be the wrong direction for this chassis. So although you, it was spinning so much faster in reverse than forward, and you can you can swap around the transmitter and you can reverse the motor wires and everything, but because the timing is, I think it was, maybe an anti-clockwise, but I think, it depends how you look at it, of course. From from the pinion side, it looked like it was anti-clockwise. Um, that'll always be spinning faster that way. Now you can take the, the end off it and adjust the timing. But the last time I tried that on another motor, uh, I ended up not getting it quite right and the motor ran rough and hot and I just thought I didn't want to go through that again because the motor was, no, it was quite cheap because it came straight from RC Mar, but it was a nice little motor and I didn't want to ruin it and I can always find a use for it. So what I've done is I've gone for this um, Holmes Hobbies, which is the, the, the brand that everybody was recommending as the best brand for brush motors. Um, it's a Crawl Master Sport. Now that's a 13, I believe, a 13, 12, sorry, 12 turn, 550 sized. Now 12 turns actually beyond the limit of this speed control. It can only take down to, a, I believe, a 15 or something, or 16. But this is actually okay because this is a five slot motor, not a three slot, which is standard. Five slot motors produce less torque and less power and they're less strenuous than the ESC. So although this is a 12 turn, it's more like a 20, 25, 27 turn, in sorry again, phone, in terms of what it what what it requires of the speed controller. Um, so that's okay. Now, the trade-off for the less torque and power is it's very, the five slot motor is extremely smooth at the bottom, very smooth at low speeds, which is perfect for a crawler. The only potential downside is if it's so low in torque, that you can't climb over something, you have to give it more throttle and it will jump across, which is which is why I've gone for the slightly lower turn, the more powerful one to hopefully get a good balance, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, so there's that, and as a result of, of me getting this uh, different motor, which requires different gearing, I've had to order a different pinion. I have an Axial 11 tooth pinion on the way, which hasn't arrived yet, hence why it's not running yet. Once that pinion's here, and I get the mesh correct and everything, because again, some people were complaining about the bit of a tight mesh on this um, with this car uh, for example you got the guides it says oh if you're going to use a 13 tooth pinion which is standard put them through these holes but some people go well, okay if you're using a 13 use the 14 holes and if you're using a 10 use the 11 holes move it out just a little bit so we'll see what happens there um, so I've got to wait for that once the motor is all in and running nice and it's all bolted down I can deal with the electronics the receiver box and everything um, the servo wire is a bit short, but I've, I've ordered a, well actually it's there, it's over there now, it's arrived, uh, some extensions. So I've got some cable extensions for that. And once that's all neat and tidy and working, then I'll sort out the wiring for the for the lights, the light buckets, uh, keep them nice and neat, and hopefully somewhere where I can unplug them and plug them in easy, because obviously when I unplug this, I'm going to have to remove the shell, either also removing the lights each time, or... Um, just leaving it plugged in and having it flop over to the side. We'll see which one's easier. Um, I'm guessing just unplugging the lights because you've got, you got this little plug here which you can just pull out. Um, but we'll see. So that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, there's a few more bits arriving uh, soon. I don't know when. Um, the snorkel hasn't arrived yet, but it's on its way now, thank thankfully. So I'll have the snorkel there. That's why there's a vent there on this side. So I've got a vent, like an air vent. There's supposed to be one on this side, but I've left it off because I'm going to do snorkel. Um, incidentally, I've uh, deviated from the instructions on the shell a fair amount. This is not the standard grill that's advertised. The grill that's advertised uh, and shown on the pictures, it has a, sort of bits at each side, and it's, but it's smooth. It has no um, texture to it at all. Um, and what you do is there's red stripy stickers that you just, they're horizontal like that and you basically put the reds. But I don't like the idea of a flat, black, non-textured grill with just red stickers on it. Um, so I went, this is also included in the kit. This this is, I believe, the, the same grill as from the first Komodo. So that's got an actual texture to it. So I've decided to go with that one instead. Um, also, there's a huge mask included for a huge sunroof. I mean, it's enormous. It's most of the roof size. And again, I didn't want that. I just didn't want Honestly, I was going for a real sort of tough truck look with this. I mean, obviously the slightly lighter colour doesn't quite lend itself as well as the darker would. But anyway, um, a real sort of tough truck. Um, and I thought the uh, a big, massive pane of glass across the roof would sort of counter that a little bit. I mean, if you rolled it over in real life, that would all smash up or whatever. So I just, I just. Figured it, it didn't quite suit the aesthetic I was going for quite as well. 
Um, oh yeah, and that is Fast Tracks Smoke Silver I've used to um, tint the windows. It's actually a paint that's for things like window tinting and things. It's not like a normal black that I've just used very, very light coats. I mean, it is light coat, but it's for that sort of thing. So overall, I'm pleased with the job I've done. Um, I just wish it was a slightly darker colour, but again, as I said, it stands out with the de decals, the graphics better, and the fact that it looks better here than it does there. I mean, it really does. That's not so good on camera. It looks really flat. Um, it is darker here than that as well. So, so there's that. Uh, on the way, so we have the snorkels on the way, as I said, the pinions on the way. Um, I've ordered an alloy um, servo mount because the servo is mounted on a plastic mount and 20, 20 plus kilos of shove, it's like 21 points on me. Um, as you're turning it left and right, the servo's flexing back and some dark backwards and forwards on the mount. So I don't want that. I mean, eventually it'll fatigue the mount a little bit. So just get a metal one. Um, I've also ordered 8mm wider um, hex, uh, hexes, essentially. Uh, you might have seen the build where I, I use a bit of hex spacers to be, to be able to get the uh, beadlock cap on, um, which is fine, but it means that there's less uh, connection between the wheel hex and the real hex itself because there's a spacer in the way taking up so many mil. Um, so there's not that much overlap between the, the two hexes, and I would like more, so I've gone for... Uh, wider hexes overall and I'll just replace the spacers and the normal hexes with these wider ones wider ones and it'll give me plenty of purchase in the wheels as well as letting me put the caps on which is good. Um, I've also ordered threaded rod just to sleeve between the, the rear shock towers in order to prevent this flexing. I'll be able to brace that. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the front. Um, you can't do that with the front because you won't be able to get the battery in and out. So. Um, Still a little, it doesn't rule, it doesn't roll massively, it's still got every one revolution, it still has a wee, not clunk or clatter, but um, it's much easier than it's, there's it has a bit, there's a little bit more friction and then it's easier, then it's got a little bit more friction, it's fine, but um, it doesn't roll particularly smoothly, um, but I don't have any more shims and to be honest, when I tested it with the other motor, the one that ran backwards faster, um, the noise was coming from the too tight pinion mesh. Um, so, and it wasn't actually that noisy, it was quite quiet, it's just the pinion mesh was a wee bit loud. So I think, honestly, it'll be alright. Most crawlers do have a bit of a whine to them, so. And it's not grabby or anything, it's just there's one part that's just a little bit more friction. But with this big 550 motor and 3 cell, it'll be able to overpower that fine, and I think maybe it'll slacken off with use. That's my thoughts, that's my hopes anyway. Uh, it's not easy to get in at everything again to unbolt it all, and like I said, I don't have a shim anyway, so I've used them all. Um, I think that's everything that's on its way into happen. I can't really remember if there's anything else. Um, I'm just desperate to now bring it out and have a shot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the build videos. Um, I did. I enjoyed doing it, I, mostly. I, obviously the parts were wrong and stuff and, and the, the axles were giving me a bit of a headache, but uh, editing those videos was a nightmare. Uh, I think I'd, I don't think I'll do that whole mobile phone above um, camera here, two angle thing, because it just takes, it takes about three, four hours to edit each one half hour segment, uh, at least, and um, it's awful. <laughs> so I might come up with something better. In the meantime, I hope you like like everything I've done. Um, you know, I've got the Komodos there, drop the beast. I don't know why that's the phrase, but it's the phrase for this truck. Also a little Komodo in the front. I could have put things like, I, I, what I would have liked is some more silver stickers for the for the bonnet there, because it's there's got a lot going on in the sides, and quite a lot going on in the back. Um, not much going on in the bonnet there. Um, but I didn't want to, I mean, obviously I've got Hobby Home stickers, or ho Holmes Hobby stickers, sorry for the motor. And I've got hobby wing stickers for the ESC and everything, but this is supposed to be representing a real vehicle. It's supposed to be a, a scale representation of a real vehicle. You wouldn't drive around a real truck with hobby wing written all over it or anything, so I'm just going to leave that off. Um, I think it looks good anyway. Um, it's just, I'm being really picky, really picky. Yeah. But I'm not going to replace it. Not until I ruin it anyway, which probably will happen. But my little Ford Bronco has said, uh, stood the test of time 
reasonably well and it's rolled down loads of hills. Speaking of the hard Ford Bronco, the hard Bronco, the hard Bronco. Speaking of the hard Bronco, poor wee Ford Bronco. It's been completely outclassed. <laughs> I mean, look. Daw. Daw. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of lost its, uh, its crown. Not that it was the king of anything but this. I mean, this is the only crawler I had, so that's the only reason it had the crown. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks a bit dinky now, doesn't it? Same, same size of tyres I've got on it. Um, roughly the same same size. They're just not as aggressive. Um, roof height's actually slightly taller on the Bronco. It's only because it's sticking up like a sore thumb. Um, but yeah, it's um, there's there's the back wheels lined up, and it's uh, it's not. If I move it as far back as the bumper on that, there we are. You can see it's uh, yeah, bumper there, yeah. <laughs> But never mind. It's it's served me well, but there's a there's a new king. That's for sure. Right. At least it can beat the hang long truck. Oh. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. See you soon. Bye bye.